Uh, let's move to Gonzaga, who we alluded to briefly. There was 10 seconds left when we mentioned we've got our eyes on it. Gonzaga escapes with the victory at BYU. Julian Strother hits the big shot. They were down two. Uh, a missed free throw opened the door. Strother slammed the door shut. Now, this is Gonzaga's third consecutive game on the road in this conference that has been a tie game with less than four minutes to go. BYU, solid team. I don't think any of the teams they've played have been cupcakes in the last three, but this is not the dominance in conference play that we have seen from Gonzaga for really the better part of the last six, seven years at this point. Is this something to be concerned about for this Gonzaga team? Laval, let's go to you first. What do you think? I don't know. I think it's interesting that they've been on the road for three straight games, just in terms of conference scheduling, <laughs> because that's, you know, that's a, a, a typical, most of the, you try to, to stay away from that type of stretch. Uh, hey, that's interesting because Willard brought that up talking about how the big East makes sure to take care of their teams. Yeah, we, the they tried not to do that. That was the thing in the Big East. You tried not to. I mean, it happened from time to time, and every coach complained about it when it happened to them. And but it, you know, I digress. Um, no, I, I, you know, it's BYU's. They, they, you know, they're going. They they'll play Portland next. There's good teams in that league, so I don't want to discount like that league's a good. It's a good conference. Like say, you know, Santa Clara and San Francisco. Um, and so you get them on your home court and, you know, a couple of teams had a shot. I thought San Francisco was going to beat them. And, and I think this, it helps you once you get to, uh, postseason, if you're, if you're Gonzaga, uh, or Houston and you're in a league where, you know, you, you, you may not have on paper, the high, the quad one type of opportunities and whatnot, but if you have close games and you found ways to win close games, when you get to tournament play, it, it does nothing but help. You know, somebody has to step up and make a big shot. Now there's you now there's confidence. Um, you had to get a stop. Like Gonzaga had to get they, they took the lead. They still had to get a stop to win. Uh, and when you've done those things and you can reference back uh, in tight ball games, I thought Connecticut hadn't had that until they got the Big East play and and, and they lost a couple because they didn't have any close games in non con They were beating people by twelve or more. Mm. Uh, so I think that's a factor late that they can point back to and it'll be, it'll serve them well. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I fully agree with you saying that the West coast conference is a, is a good conference. I'm just, I'm not buying that Laval. <laughs> I'm I, like, I'm not going back into coaching, so I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not buying that. They have three teams in the top 100 at Kempom and BYU is one of those teams. This is a very atypical BYU team. Right? And I, I realize Mark Pope is trying to do things a little bit differently, but this is a team that's towards the bottom of the country in three point shooting. It's a team that really thrives on the defensive end, not a ton of offense. And like, Whenever you play Gonzaga, you better be able to score the ball. The fact that they were able to hold Gonzaga as low as they were is a minor miracle and says a lot about their defense. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there, Laval. BYU is good. Uh, St. Mary's is good. Outside of that, like there, you would expect them to win by double digits. I mean, that's I don't think that's crazy. The triple away game that you alluded to, that's obviously a huge thing. And Gonzaga is everybody's Super Bowl in that conference. So there's something to be said there. Uh, this Gonzaga team, quite frankly, compared to the recent memory, the last two, three years, uh, it's not quite what it has been in a large part due to uh, some younger guards that are being relied on heavily. And they're very talented guards. But that's kind of – am I worried about them in that league? No. I think St. Mary's is very good. They could give them a run for their money. Kim Palm loves the Gales, but uh, I, I feel like Gonzaga is still going to win that league. And – you know, moving forward, they're they're going to win a game in the tournament. It's the same old. It's the same old shtick. It's like, but this is not quite the Jalen Suggs level guard. The uh, you know the numerous other guys that they've had in recent memory. It, it's not that, but it's still a very good team. It's still a team that's very capable of winning their league. Did you pick that phrase, that collection of words specifically? To they're going to win a game in the tournament, or are they going to win games in the tournament? This Gonzaga team. I'm just curious. I'm just, you know, I, I, I tend to ramble. <laughs> I'm just curious. Listen, I, I, people. No, know, they could get, uh, they're a sweet 16 team if, if okay. you know, all goes well. 
Yeah, to put you on the spot. Okay, it depends on matchup. It depends on draws. Yeah, it all I, depends uh, on matchups. I don't know that there's a player in the sport the last few years that uh, maybe was underappreciated more than Andrew Nemhard, and that sounds crazy because I think a lot of people did give him a lot of praise while he was at Gonzaga. But I think a lot of people also thought this was going to be a pretty seamless transition. You, you were worried about losing Chet, obviously. How do you replace a unicorn like Chet Holmgren? But I don't think as many people were worried about what the backcourt would look like. Because there's a bunch of talented dudes, high pedigree recruits, Nolan Hickman, um, Hunter Salas. I mean, Malachi Smith, the transfer portal. You felt great about that group on paper coming into the season. Yeah. You can't replace what Nemhard did for this team. So uh, that's where my eye will be is how does this backcourt continue to develop? And I think uh, if it continues playing at the level it has been this year, I think you might see some more dogfights for that team.